Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks, Marlene, for the introduction. Thanks to Farming Smarter. We do 12 of these regional meetings across the province, and over the last couple of years, I've been talking to Ken about different ways to work together, and last year at the Lethbridge Farming Smarter Conference, we did a breakfast in a, in a separate room as part of the event and it helped us reach out to a lot more canola growers. And this year, Ken said, why don't we just make it part of the agenda? So uh, you can almost look at this as kind of like the timeshare part of the morning where you got a free breakfast, but there's really no such thing as a free breakfast. So in exchange for that, you get uh, your fair bit of shock and awe this morning. The shock might come from Ralph Lang and, and Bob Blackshaw, and the awe is more like awe. Now we got to listen to an ACPC update. But really what we want to do we can get the slides up, is run through our regional update, which is really more of a, uh, a shareholders report, because you guys are the owners of the Alberta Canola Producers Commission, and so we need to keep you up to date on what you're, we're doing with your checkoff dollars. And when you came in, uh, there was a table with our annual reports there, and I don't know how many of you picked one up but I encourage you to. Uh, it's got a lovely canola field on the front. It's got everything that we've been doing in the last year uh, highlighted in there in the various areas. I'm gonna summarize those kind of quickly this morning. And it's also got our complete financial reports, both our budgets uh, from last year, our budgets going forward this year, as well as our audited statements. And it's a little bit different doing this at a conference. It doesn't really allow for the usual amount of Q&A. Uh, but as Marlene mentioned, she's going to be around for both days. I'll be here till about noon tomorrow, and at any time, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, we can uh, cover them then. So Marlene alluded to uh, the Canadian Canola Growers Association, and uh, we're a member of a couple organizations, and sometimes people get confused as to where Alberta Canola begins and where it ends and where... Um, we fit in these other organizations. So we're the provincial organization that collects the $1 a ton refundable levy, and then we're a member of two national organizations, one being the Canadian Canola Growers, which Marlene mentioned, she sits on the board. They have two primary purposes. One is policy development, so they've been working on things like the Rail Transit Review and the changes to the Canada Grain Act. And they also do the Cash Advance Program, which now includes all the crops you grow. A uh, little bit of change is going on there with the open market system. It, it certainly has been a, maybe a challenge for some of you working with the cash advance program. Part of that's just the simple fact that when the wheat board did the cash advance, they knew they were getting your grain. The CCGA doesn't collect grain, so the government put in some extra rules and regulations that, that have created that first time application challenge. The other organization we're a part of is the is the Canola Council of Canada, and that's the national organization that represents the entire value chain. So not just the growers, but also the exporters and the crushers. And we all pay an equal share into that organization. I'll talk a little bit about, it, what, about its purpose in a few slides here. So our mission statement, which governs every decision the board of directors makes and all the activities that the staff does, it's about improving your long-term profitability. So anything we do isn't about just raising production levels, it's about trying to make you more profitable in the long term. Our structure is quite simple. Marlene mentioned she's the director for Region 12. Farmers elect the directors, and then those directors form the board. There's 12 of them across the province, and they set the goals and the policy. Then myself and, self and the other staff, we move forward and try and generate activities and programs to meet those goals. We've got a big board, 12, across the province and a really nice mix of farmers, good diversity. So we're represented from southern Alberta right to the piece on a regional basis. We've got a nice mix of large acre farmers, smaller acre farmers. We've got tall farmers, short farmers, some skinny farmers and some that are working on it. The region that Marlene represents is Region 12, and you can see the counties listed out there. It's one of the 12 regions, and geographically it's one of the largest regions, and it's a region that is really moving forward in terms of production. We've seen some of the largest increases in canola production as a percentage in this region. That's, and that's what I like to think of as sustainable uh, growth, because of a lot of that is new acres, new growers. Some of our growth in other regions has come from tightening rotations, and that's not really the case in region. Region 12, or in Region 9, which a lot of you come from, which would be the Lethbridge, High River, sort of the, the western half of southern Alberta. And combined, you can see that 
that it represents almost a million tons, which is about a fifth of our total production. So southern Alberta, some people say there's not a lot of canola down there, but there's almost a million tons produced in 2011. And in terms of comparing that with some of our other regions, Region 12 is the region we're in, Region 9 is southern Alberta, and you can see that, that they're equal there in, in terms of production compared with the, other, with the other areas of the province. So just in terms of Canadian canola production and, and where we fit, Alberta is second only to Saskatchewan and that's simply because they have a lot more acres. Uh, but we did produce a little over 5 million tonnes last year. We expect that to be down a little bit this year. And we use the production estimates to help form our budgets combined with the average yields. And you can see that this is where Alberta is ahead of Saskatchewan with our average yields coming in around the 35 bushel per acre mark across the province. Some of the eastern provinces do a little bit better in overall yield. And most of that's due to the fact that it's a winter crop, a little bit higher production, but very limited acres as shown on the previous slide. I'm going to touch on our financials because again you guys are the shareholders. These are all outlined in detail in that annual report. Uh, just want to run through a few quick things in terms of revenue. Uh, last year we brought in about 5.6 million dollars which represents the 5.6 million tons that were produced. This year given some of the challenges that that Ralph Lang is going to talk about with Black Leg as well as Aster Yellows and weather events. We do see that total production coming in down a little bit just under 5 million. Our refunds uh, remain steady at about 6% and then we do generate a little bit of money through interest fees and other grants to bring our budget for the coming year to just over $5 million. In terms of where we spend your money, this is looking at last year where we actually spent the money and you can see the biggest portions are the Canola Council of Canada. So we pay a 23 cent a ton levy to Canola Council which is the same cents per ton that Saskatchewan pays in, Manitoba pays in and the crushers and the exporters all pay in. We also give them a little extra money to manage uh, some additional projects on behalf of the growers. Research is a very big proportion as is market development and grower relations and extension activities that allow us to sponsor conferences like this. And then about 17% is sort of the cost of running the business and I'll break down the coming year in a little bit more detail. This is just a breakdown and it's more detailed in the annual report in terms of how we spent the money within each of these main budget areas. But we are budgeting for increases primarily in research, market development and grower relations. The reason that the budget is higher on Canola Council in the coming year as opposed to last year is because we're on a one year delay. So we're actually paying in this year based on the tons that were growing last year. Last year we ran about a $1.2 million surplus which has actually been locked away for future research and I'll explain that a little bit in the research slides. And this year one of the challenges for organizations like ourselves that have seen tremendous growth in the acreage and the yield is to spend all the money that's that's being collected. So the board of directors said to the staff, we need to find more quality projects to do and we need to work on the reserve. And that's why we're budgeting for an $800,000 deficit by increasing our investment in some of the areas that are most likely to increase your profitability. It's not going to hurt the overall financial health of the organization. Right now we're sitting on just under $10 million in assets. There's a few lines there that are worth pointing out though. Uh, one is the uh, future commitments reserve, which is the $2 million and what that is is when, when ACPC invests in research, what they do is they set aside the money to complete the project. So for example, if we fund Dr. Blackshaw on a $100,000 project that's a five year project, we pay him $20,000 this year and we put $80,000 into that account that we can't use for anything else. And what that ensures is in the event of a crop failure, other financial issues come up, we don't have to phone Bob in the fifth year and say, we don't have your $20,000 to fund it. So the majority of the money in there is the money that's allocated to research projects that are currently being worked on so that we can pay them as we go forward. Oops, the uh, $4 million, I don't want to blow past that one because it's a big number. The $4 million in internally restricted reserves is th primarily three things. There's a $300,000 shutdown fund just in case the ACPC is ever closed down for whatever reason to, to finish up leases and, and other expenses uh, incurred when an organization closes. There's a $1 million crop contingency fund 
which again is there so that if there is a crop failure, we've already got money to set aside to fund research, but that $1 million would allow us to continue other important work in market development or grower relations and extension. The big chunk of it is a $3 million allocation that was brought in last year, and that money is set aside for future nutritional research. So working on getting clinical trials done on canola oil to prove that it's the healthiest choice in, in, in the oil market yet again. Where we're at with that money right now is it's set aside. We're finishing up the first section of the Growing Forward Science Cluster projects, which includes nutritional research. Once we see the results of that, then we can see the next steps going forward. And it's, it's surprisingly easy to burn through $3 million as soon as you start doing any sort of a, a study on human, whereas when you're working with plants, there's not a lot of, there's relatively low cost to testing plants. Uh, if we were to split this room in half and half the room starts eating canola oil and the other half doesn't, the costs go way through the roof. So it's important work because we've seen the acres grow, we've seen the yield grow, the overall production's gotten higher and the only way to maintain high profitable prices is through increased market demand and certainly nutritional science research is one of the ways to accomplish that. Going forward into next year, not a lot of changes in the allocation of the budget, a very similar pie chart to the other one, but you can see by that graph in terms of where we're allocating the most dollars, we've increased the funding into things like research market development and grower relations and extension and lowered some of the, the percentage-wise basis on some of our corporate administration. So we're trying hard to spend the money on the things that make the most money for our shareholders, which is you guys. In terms of Canola Council, they're about 24% of our budget. Uh, the main things Council does for us is the entire crop production program. So under the agreement with them, there are three agronomists based in Alberta. We actually pay extra dollars for a fourth agronomist. Right now, we're, or we're not. Canola Council's in the process of finding a replacement for Troy Posofsky, who covered Southern Alberta, who went back to Saskatchewan. He realized he was gonna have to change his clocks again and just went running. Um, we spend money on research through them. They manage our national programs, the science cluster programs. They also manage the uh, Prairie Canola Agronomic Research Program where we partner with the other provinces to leverage our dollars. Probably the most important role in many ways that Canola Council serves is for market development and market access. So with market access, if you think back two years ago when China decided to close the borders to Black Lake, it was Canola Council that went there representing, first went to Ottawa representing the entire industry, then went with Ottawa to China to start getting those borders open. Sort of a similar thing when we're looking at working our way into countries like India where there's three billion people that now have disposable income and are hungry for a healthy oil. Going over there with Council is much more efficient than going over there as Alberta and then having Manitoba go over and then having more groups go over. So it works really well on these international issues. And one of the other international areas that they've taken the lead on is some of the sustainability initiatives. So there's countries out there, many of the European ones that are sort of starting to put possible restrictions on canola imports based on were trees cut down, were sloughs drained, were these types of environmental practices followed. And again, it's much more efficient to have one national organization that can represent all the growers in the entire industry taking the lead on that rather than just having ourselves allocate those resources. In terms of the board of directors, it's about 3% of our budget and that's simply the cost of having 12 directors spread across the province attend quarterly board meetings as well as represent the board on the Canadian Canola Growers, on the Canola Council of Canada and other events that they represent us on. Corporate administration, nothing too exciting about that. That's simply the cost of having the lights turned on, paper in the photocopy or a phone line to work and office staff to answer the phone. It's a little under 10% of our budget. Government and industry relations is about 3% of our budget and one of the things that ACPC did in the last year is we hired Carla Bergstrom as a policy analyst. There are a tremendous amount of uh, provincial policies and guidelines being developed on things like non-point <coughs> source pollution, um, land use framework and having Carla be able to attend some of those meetings and manage the mountain of paperwork that comes from government programs and condense it down into sort of a, a risk assessment that the board of directors can use as a guideline to review 
to help make decisions on your behalf has been very, very effective for us. It saves the board from reading board books that are this thick to ones that are only about that thick. Production research, a uh, very big part of our budget, almost a quarter of it, and simple, two simple goals, help you grow canola and help you control the pests that affect it. So last year there was about $800,000 spent on canola research and to finish those projects, there's about $1.3 million that are there to finish them up in years two, three, four, five. And in that annual report, there's a list of every project that we're funding, who's doing the science and when it's expected to be completed. When we fund research, we get all the applications in and then the research committee along with people like Murray Hartman and the Kennel Council Agronomists, we look at those proposals and we rank them based on the ability to return a profit to your farm, to actually complete the work and for the work to be quality. And once we rank those projects, we fund the ones that reach a certain level in ranking. And many times we don't have enough good projects to spend our entire budget which is one of the reasons we've had a carryover in cash over a few years. Last year, we had more good projects than we had dollars for, so the research committee went back to the board and we funded an additional $1.3 million worth of research because there was good quality projects. Our goal is never to spend your grower dollars just for the sake of spending them to run a balanced budget. Our goal is always to invest that money into the most profitable projects in the long run. And one of the areas that we funded, we funded a number of different projects, but almost a quarter of the dollars that got released last year for new projects went to Farming Smarter Projects. So Ken Coles and his team put in three projects there, including inter-row seeding, night spraying, and some soil variability. Last year they received $105,000, and in total there's about, uh, what is that, $375,000 in research money that went into Farming Smarter good quality work that we know is going to get completed on time, that we know is driven based on attaining higher profits for our growers. One of the other things that ACPC did in the last year or the last couple of years along with the other grower groups is a couple of years ago the prairie canola variety trials were shut down when industry stopped participating. Growers across the prairies told their provincial organizations they wanted these trials back. So these are now all funded by the growers. Uh, in your copy of Canola Digest, you should have received a booklet with the canola performance trials in them. There's also an interactive website at canolaperformancetrials.ca that lets you zoom in on a map, look not only at our small plot trial data, but look at the sites that were done by companies that we audited. So they're big sites that lead to their advertising campaign. If they contributed and participated in the program, we were able to go out, audit their sites and say the protocols are at a standard that we believe in, we have a confidence in the data coming out and they're approved. Not all the companies participate, the door is open to all of them. If you see a company that's not participating in there, your voice as a customer is a lot stronger than our voice as a commission trying to get them back in participating. If you use the website, I'll just point out, there's a video right on the home page that takes about five minutes to explain how to use the site. It's well worth your time because it's a very good site with a lot of capabilities and you can easily get lost trying to figure out how to manage it. So I know how much men like me love instruction manuals, so we put it in a video form for you. We're wrapping up the, the final stage of the first group of science cluster projects, which was a $20 million fund with $14.5 million in federal money to fund three research categories, oil, uh, nutritional research, meal research, and crop production. There was 31 projects. The important thing to note here is that where did the other $5.5 million come from? And that was your dollars put on the table. And there is no more powerful thing than grower money put on the table. Because when we can put grower money on the table, then Ottawa wants to match it or double it or triple it. If we don't have grower money on the table, trust me, there's nobody in Ottawa sitting there today thinking, how can I spend money on canola to increase growers' profitability in Medicine Hat, Alberta? But your dollars get matched and matched again, so we work together with all the provinces and then Canola Council manages that. There is 31 different crop production research projects that are all being wrapped up right now. They're being fed into the publications that Canola Council provides to you, into the presentations the agronomists give. And coming this next summer towards harvest time, 
you'll all receive a special issue of Canola Digest that will summarize all 31 of those research projects. Grow relations and extension, that's the area that I look after. Our goals are to help you grow canola, market canola, and make farm management decisions, and through meetings like this, make you aware of, of all the ACPC activities. Most of our agronomic work is done through the Canola Council of Canada. Again, we pay for that fourth agronomist in Alberta, which we hope to have in place early in January. They look after all the fact sheets and publications, and they're currently working on a new, more interactive website, as well as an online diagnostic tool to help you with your production. If you're not getting the Canola Watch newsletter, I strongly, strongly recommend that you do. It's a once a week newsletter in the growing season, once a month, once a month in the winter. And how it works is each Monday, the, the nine agronomists across the province phone all their contacts, get a good handle on what's happening with canola production across the prairies. Then they have a conference call along with provincial specialists, entomologists, weed scientists, pathologists, whoever needs to be on the call, and they talk about science-based solutions for your production problems. And then they send it out in a nice, easy to read, quick email with a bunch of links to good quality information. It's free of charge. You can sign up on our website at canola.ab.ca or you can go to canolawatch.org, canolawatch.org, and you can look through all of the information that was put out in the last year. In terms of some of our key extension activities, we continue to deliver the daily grain price and the weekly feed grain prices. We're working on uh, new daily wheat prices. Uh, hasn't been without its challenges because there doesn't seem to be one standard wheat that all the grain companies are using, but we hope to have something up early in the new year that will help you with that. We do a number of marketing workshops. There's one listed on our website for the Tabor area, which is a six-day course with Lee Melville that covers everything from using options and calls and puts and all those different techniques that you can use. We host our own meetings and then we're happy to sponsor meetings like this that other organizations put on. And if there's people here from, from the counties, for example, we're certainly willing to work with you to help put on good quality information meetings for our growers. We've been working quite closely with the, with the applied research associations, in particular Farming Smarter is one of them, uh, over the last few years funding demo plots and we've actually expanded that program now. And then we're also involved in the Farm Tech Conference. And just in terms of our Farming, Star, Farming Smarter Extension funding, what ACPC is now doing is we're providing more stable funding to the ARAs beyond just demo plots so that they can plan workshops, tours, newsletters, whatever they want to do to help them with their extension, we're giving them annual funding. And this really came as a result of having conversations with Ken Coles who identified to me that there was an issue that they can get funding for research, but they have a hard time finding extension for funding. And we've been working very closely with them, and we have a tremendous amount of confidence. It makes my job very easy in southern Alberta. I live up by Camros. If we have anything going on in southern Alberta, we just phone Farming Smarter, and we essentially subcontract them. And we know the job's going to get done, and it's going to done well, be done well. So you should be very, very proud of the organization that, rents, that represents you down here because uh, they're really at the top of the list of the people that we consider go-to when we need something done in this province. A couple of the really cool events we did in the last year that I just want to touch on, we did one called the Canola Lab 3D, which we held up at Holes Greenhouse in Spruce Grove or St. Albert rather, and what we did is it was the brainchild of one of the council agronomists to grow out a couple of plants so that people could come in in the wintertime and look at disease and, and insects and, and fertility challenges. And it turned into about 2,000 plants that were growing out, held in two days, small group learning, you came in and you got a chance to see what does this disease look like at various stages, what does a nitrogen or sulfur or boron deficiency look at. We sold that event out in about 36 hours. We're doing another one this March. Uh, I know Mike from Farming Smarter came up last year. Actually, it's February this year. We'll sell this thing out in about six hours. So if you want to make sure that you get this, make sure you're signed up for our newsletter, Canola Watch. You'll know when the event's taking place, and you want to sign up early because the industry will be there at 8 a.m. when registration opens on that day. Another neat event that we did down in southern Alberta was the Canola Gala. It wasn't a gala. It was a gala because it was held on the... Uh, club root infected site near Brooks, so we had different plots there, different researchers and extension people on hand so that farmers and industry 
and county representatives could come and look at club root in a sort of a protected environment and see how it affects different plants, including canola and the weeds that it affects. Excuse me. One of the uh, cool things that we do at these events is we bring out our friends, the bugs. That is a diamondback moth larvae, and those are carabid beetles. And you gotta be quick with the camera because it takes less than 10 seconds and those beetles have destroyed that diamondback moth larvae. And these events give us a really good opportunity to show you firsthand how beneficial insects work and why we need to be working towards thinking about them when we're making spray decisions. We also sponsor the Canola School, which Sean Haney puts on, so you can watch all of our episodes uh, that we've sponsored, which are on our website as well. And Sean's become kind of a tireless promoter for canola for us at various trade shows. We're also working on an educational gap analysis project, which should be of interest to farm managers. The board identified almost a lack of training for farm managers to go to the next level for things like human resource management, succession planning, farm financial health planning, those types of things. So what we're doing right now is we're trying to do a gauge what all is available to growers out there for more advanced learning opportunities. At the same time, we're finding out from growers what their needs are. And one of two things will happen as a result of this. We'll either find out that the programs already exist and, and there's a lack of awareness, in which case we can work on that awareness, or we're going to need to design like a grower university type of a system. If you want to stay connected with us, it's easy to do. If you go to our website at canola.ab.ca, you'll see that banner on every page. Click on it. You can sign up for our newsletters, our grain prices, agronomic bulletins, uh, whatever you need to get there. If you're a social media user, so are we. If you go to YouTube, you can find all the webinars that ourselves and Canola Council's done, all the Canola School videos and some short video clips on things like scouting for club root or scouting for black leg. We're on Twitter, as Ken mentioned, our Alberta Canola account, as well as our ACPC Grain Prices account, which sends out the closing canola prices every day. We can also do that by text. If you want to know how to get the closing canola prices by text, uh, just come find me throughout the next couple of days. We do a weekly podcast as well that's on all the radio stations, or 25 of them across Alberta. But it's also a five to seven minute interview each week that's posted on our website or you can subscribe through iTunes. Uh, just look for Growing With Canola on iTunes. Last week it was Murray Hartman talking about the spread of club root. This week it's Clint Yerke talking about black leg, which Ralph Lang's gonna talk about here shortly. And then seeing as though there's so many people on Facebook, so are we. Market development, which Marlene looks after, is a big part of our program as well. And there's three main goals really with market development. Maintain the markets that we already have, expand into new markets or new market uses, and make sure consumers and maybe primarily school kids are aware of the importance of the ag industry and in particular canola. And Simone Demers Collins, who looks after this uh, as a staff member, does dozens and dozens of events throughout the year. And, and a couple of the neat ones that we do, um, certainly Calgary Stampede comes to mind. It's perfect that Calgary Stampede occurs during the peak of canola flowering season. So you have all these consumers flying in, driving in, past these beautiful yellow fields. They walk in a stampede, they see our tent and they ask, what is that stuff growing out there? And then we have a chance to tell them that it's canola, that it's the lowest in saturated fats, that it's highest in omega-3s, and that is a smoke point that'll knock your socks off. And all that information is actually on your pens in the table. And if you can remember those three things, you'll win pretty much every argument with your relatives over Christmas dinner. Same time, it lets us talk to them about GMOs, about herbicides, about pesticides, about multinational companies, and address all the questions that that we have, and we literally talk to thousands of consumers a day. We do lots of work with students and teachers, attending teachers' conferences, doing Aggie Days, City Slickers Harvest, things like that. And then work really closely with the health professionals, so whether that's doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, the American Diabetes Association, the Canadian Heart and Stroke people, to make sure the people that are making recommendations to consumers are aware that canola is the lowest in saturated fat, has high omega-3s and has a smoke point that'll knock your socks off. A few research projects outlined in the annual report on market development, so some work in biodiesel, some work in nutritional research, and again, 
$3 million on set aside for future nutritional research. I think one of the uh, other things that we did is we put out a new website called learncanola.com which is aimed specifically at students and teachers and if you visit that website and go to the learning resources tab there's actually Alberta education approved curriculum for grades 1 through 12 that any teacher or homeschooler can drop right into their program and teach kids on a, on a high school level about biodiversity or environmental sustainability and teach the younger kids just a little bit about farming. And then one of the fun things we do is the biodiesel jet funny car. I think it raced in Medicine Hat either last year or the year before. Um, so we raced this car. It'll be up at the Farm Tech display. We're a sponsor of that. And then we extended that actually into the second of three children's books that ACPC's produced aimed at ages about seven to nine. And it's a story of an of a auto mechanic or a farm equipment mechanic who got this idea. Could he build a jet powered funny car that ran on canola? And it sort of teaches kids not only his story about, but why biodiesel's good and why we're good for the environment by producing things like that. As I mentioned, the car will be at Farm Tech. Uh, if you haven't been to Farm Tech, one of you ha is going to win. We're going to draw probably at lunchtime. You should have all gotten a little ticket from when you came in. So we'll give away one prize, uh, a registration of Farm Tech, which is in January, last week of January. If you're there, we'd sure love to see you at our annual general meeting as well. A couple of housekeeping notes. It is a regulatory review year for ACPC. We're required to do this every five years by Marketing Council. No major changes planned to our regulations this year other than uh, realignment of a couple of regions that are the northeastern part of Alberta, sort of Vegreville through Lloyd Minister. Right now, those two regions are divided by a secondary highway, whereas all of our other regions are divided on county lines. So we're going to shift the region boundary over, which will affect a couple of hundred growers, but will make uh, things like the election process much more straightforward. Resolutions, we don't do resolutions at regional meetings. We only do them at the annual general meeting. But if you have something you're interested in bringing forward, as a resolution at the annual general meeting. We do require it 10 days ahead in writing so we can have all the proper background material done. If you're interested in doing a resolution, then I certainly encourage you either to talk to Marlene as your regional director who can help you uh, make sure that the resolution's properly worded, that you get the background material ahead of time as well, or talk to our general manager, Ward Toma, who's in the office uh, many days. And lastly, next week sometime, if Farming Smarter has your email, they're going to send an email to you on our behalf, which will be a quick survey. It's kind of designed for all the regional meetings, so it won't necessarily apply to this one completely. But if we get your feedback, we would certainly appreciate that, and we'll draw for one winner at our annual general meeting. We'll get a $1,000 gift certificate for Best Buy. So it's about a 10-question multiple-choice survey. should only take you two or three minutes to do. And again, somebody from this region will get entered into a draw for that $1,000 gift certificate. And that's our quick update. Again, Marlene and I are around uh, both of the next two days. I don't think we're doing questions on the stage, are we? Aren't we? Time. Oh, we do have time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got time. So if anybody has any questions for Marlene or me, we'd be uh, happy to address them. Doesn't look like it. I'm going to get you ahead of schedule to start the day. That doesn't happen very often, does it? That doesn't happen very often that I'm early. But I know you've got these little cards to warn well, me, so yeah. I didn't want to I see them come to, out. I didn't get to use my, my I have to save them for cars. Ralph. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. And I'm going to give this back to you without even looking at what it is because I'm a staff member and you can put that in the 4-H auction tonight. There we go. And don't tell anyone what it is. Just do a blind Let's auction a blind. on it. Okay, thanks very much for your time and hope to chat with you throughout the next day.